Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott. This is Double Needle Design. I'm going to talk a little bit about phases. Let's talk about understanding phase filters, understanding individual phases, and what it means when you're trying to do multiple phases in a project for new construction versus existing. Maybe you're doing a third phase, maybe you're doing five phases. So let's talk a little bit about how those work. Let's talk about um, how to make phase filters work properly. I'd like to title this video, um, Stuff I Heard This Week While I Was At Work. Thought I would recreate it and show you what we did on it. So let's get started. So let's start with this small model I've got. Uh, here, this is a small retail space I created for the purposes of this video. What we're going to show is the differences in phases if we were to phase this as two different uh, new construction phases instead of an existing versus a new construction. This retail shop probably isn't going to win any design awards. I threw it together in about five minutes, but it's here to illustrate the example of how this could work. So if this was a ground up construction and we were going to build this out of a bare land, this would all be one phase. It would all be new construction. Uh, any wall that I select, any door that I select, it's phase created as new construction and it's never going to be demolished, <laughs> at least not yet anyway. But we've got all these all these pieces in new construction and our contractor hypothetically came back to us or our owner and said, I would like to split this into two phases. I want to do a shell and core and then I want to do a tenant improvement later because I don't know what tenant's going to be there, but I think it's going to be this company that's going to put this retail space in here. So here you are halfway through your deadline and suddenly you get the request to break this into two phases. So immediately you head up here to your phases button and you look and you go, oh man, I've got existing and new construction. The first thing your brain wants to say is here, one of them has to be shell and core, the other is new construction, but I'm not, uh, there's nothing existing. So I'm going to create another phase and move forward from there. Where the confusion lies is in phase filters versus project phases. The trick is when you see these phase filters, new, existing, demolished, and temporary. And a quick search in the Revit uh, help file will explain these four categories to you. But the key to walk away from is that this new does not mean new construction phase. And existing does not mean existing construction phase. What this means is the phases that are relative to the phase you're in. So for example, everything in the phase that you are in is new. Even if you are in the existing phase, everything that is in the previous phase is existing. Everything that was in the previous phase but has now been demolished is categorized as the demolished phase. And the fourth one, which I've seen before but not very often, is that everything that was in a previous phase and then has been demolished in a previous phase is temporary. So these phase filters dictate how the current view is going to display elements that were in previous this phase or even upcoming phases on this view. So for example, all of you have seen most of these filter names, show previous plus new, show new, show complete, and show all. Show all is very easy. Everything is shown all the way through, like it's been there, done that, so on. Show complete means only elements that are going to make it through all the phases to this phase you're at now are going to be shown. Otherwise, in the demolished phase, they're overwritten. They're not or they're not displayed. Let's go back to our phase list here. If you don't have an existing, there is absolutely nothing wrong with renaming this phase to whatever this phase is going to be called. And in our case, let's call it shell and core. So I will call this shell and core. And it's good to, let's just call this um, shell only no interior walls. And I like to put punctuation in here just so people know it's been me in their editing. And the second phase is going to be tenant improvement. So we'll rename that. Tenant layout for future design period. Now we could add a third phase in here. Maybe there is a, um, a second tenant coming in here. Maybe they're only this tenant is only a temporary tenant and in a year they're going to actually have another person that's going to come in and do a different layout. So we could do another phase 
after tenant improvement, we would just click this after button, which means it's gonna place a new phase after where we are. But now we have a project with three phases. I don't see an existing phase in here anywhere. So we don't have to uh, get too worked up about things being grayscaled. But what we do have to do is fix the phase filters for future phases, and I'll show you how to do that. And hit OK. Nothing has changed here on the screen because all of these are no longer in uh, new construction. They are now in tenant improvement. Whoops. These walls are in the wrong phase, right? Existing means a previous phase from the phase that you are in. And, and how do you tell what phase you're in right now? Well, for this view, if I scroll down to the bottom of my properties box, you can see that I'm in the tenant improvement phase. If I were to create a new wall, right, it's automatically going to be visible and shown as a tenant improvement wall because that's the phase I'm in for this view. So all my exterior walls, and in this case, my fire riser room, which is why I left a little break there, they're not going to be in tenant improvement. They're actually going to be in shell and core. And as soon as I do that, suddenly my walls turn gray. Uh-oh, that means they're existing, right? No, that means they're in a previous phase, okay? Let's change our doors as well and our windows, my storefront. Let's put it to shell and core. Now these guys are grayed out. And I want my fire riser room to be gray, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is delete this room out of here. It's still in my project, as it says down at the bottom down here. It's still in the project, which is not placed. Okay. So how do I fix this so that this doesn't look grayscale, right? I want to still see the previous phase as built, but I don't want it to look like an existing building. So that's where I would go to my phase filters. This view is in tenant improvement. Okay. But when I'm in the tenant improvement phase, I want to still see the previous phase as if it was new construction. So I want to change this from show all to show complete. Okay. Now, when I do that, show complete changes these walls back to the layers and the assemblies of which they were put together when we first did them. Okay. And the reason why is because if we go to our face filters and we look at show complete, anything that was in the previous phase, all right, if we go down from existing, anything in that phase is by category. Okay. And by category means it's not overridden. It's not grayscaled. So let's say we want to just show the shell and core in this view. Say we're going to make this view shell and core only. We don't want to see any interior walls. We go down to this area. We change our current phase to shell and core. And as soon as we do that, any future phase is not shown. Last thing I want to do is I want to place that fire sprinkler riser room because my current project is in shell and core. If I place a room in this view, it's associated with this phase. But when I deleted that, it's still in the tenant improvement phase. So what I have to do is go room and see how it's not listed in this box, but I'm in my shell and core phase. So I wanna go ahead and place that. I wanna call it fire riser room. So now this would be my shell and core package, okay? I could put a text node in here, future tenant, if I can spell, and I can export this onto a sheet and say, here is your shell and core plan. But as soon as I were to turn this into a tenant improvement plan, notice the fire riser went away, right? That's a previous phase and it won't show that. I still need to place the room that was my new fire riser room in the same location. Now I have a set of tenant improvement plans in a previous phase shell and core that I can also put on a sheet. So that was just a quick run through of phases and phase filters, how they work, how they interact with each other. So I hope that helped. Please don't forget to subscribe to my videos. Thanks to all the subscribers that have, and we'll see you again on the next one. I'm Scott with Double Deedle Design. Have a great day.